Okay, everybody, wanted to get started this week by, uh, first of all, explaining a uh, little dilemma that occurred last week when I was actually presenting or recording this webinar and, and uh, trying to get it uploaded and everything. Because if you can, if I love to make mistakes in the process, so then you guys can kind of run into it too. Um, last Friday when I was organizing this, we had it all, you know, ran through the whole thing, we did, you know, 20, 25 minutes of explanation, and I noticed at the very end the mute button was off which should be a problem, just to record my voice, my actions, and all those things, which it did. But I had also uh, opened a YouTube video to show something, and I left it running because it was on mute and I didn't hear it. So I didn't really worry about it, but I shut it down. When I went back to review the recording, for the end, the, the tape was running at the same time my voice was, and so it was extremely distracting. Um, it, it would have been beneficial to have a little snippet of that audio, but not the whole thing. So, you know, just kind of be aware of that as you're running through this, because we're, we'll, cover, we'll be covering some video production in here, but not a whole lot. If you get to some of the more advanced courses, then we're going to cover those things just be aware of those little quirks all right so this week's going to be very busy um, last week was too but this week we're going to be covering um we're still going to be working on creating content today and tomorrow or i'm sorry i shouldn't say tomorrow but um the first two days of the week we're going to be covering that and then the last day um we're going to be talking about presentation uh opportunities so as i mentioned when we first started covering some of the software packages there are components that we're just going to ignore right now because they're related to actually using tool in a classroom and that actually comes at a later time so don't be surprised when we revisit some of these same tools the first day we're going to be covering the basics the ones that everybody uses powerpoint and google presenter as i said we can't use office uh, open office because we don't have it loaded onto the computers that we're using but I did think that that might be, uh, their version is called Impress. So if anyone is looking for project ideas toward the end of the term, if you want to upload an office to your own computer, play around with it a little bit, and then give everybody an idea about what the differences might be, that might be a, um, a good project. Otherwise, we'll just cover it in a discussion towards the end. But today we're going to be covering those two. And we're going to find a lot of the same things that we found with spreadsheet and with Word documents that um, Microsoft is far more dynamic, lots of tools, lots of bells and whistles built into the program. And that's the, that's the important point. I think we touched on that, but I, it's worth um, reiterating that while we have a lot of tools and functionality, everything embedded compared to Google, those things can still be used in Google. A lot of these different images and functionalities and things, if they're, you want to use them and they're not built into Google, you can bring them from outside resources. It just requires a little more building, and that's the difference between the two. If you want teachers to use a lot of the high functioning capabilities, it, they're going to do it more easily in here. That's where we're in PowerPoint right now. So they're going to use it more easily here because it's right in front of them. Whereas with Google, they have to know about the functionality in the first place, enough to know that it's missing, and then they have to bring it in. That's the big difference. So as we talked about what the administrators are wrestling with is do we want to then pay to have everybody to have the high functionality system, whether or not they're actually using those tools, or do we want to go with a free one for now, which again, we don't know if it's always going to be free, but do we want to go with a free version for now because most people are, are pretty basic, otherwise they're going to bring in their own tools. But that's what they're all wrestling with, and that's what we're going to be exploring in here. Now, uh, the next day, we're still going to be working on creating content, but now we're going to look at some outside presenter tools that are not usually thought of. Uh, Prezi, some of you are familiar with it, some of you are not so much. Uh, we will cover Jing, which is screencasting, and we're going to start touching on uh, Smart Notebook software. And uh, Notebook is the basically the software program behind Smart Boards. Some of you, whether or not it depends on, I know some of your graduates, you guys all work in the schools uh, in various capacities you have in the past. And you will see that some of your schools have smart boards, some classrooms within your schools have smart boards, some have pro boards. Those are the two leading competitors right now. I don't think St. Louis area has many outside competitors between those two. Um, but the software to use is pretty much the same. It's not, it doesn't really vary all that much. So I just want to make sure that you, you understood that. We're going to be covering all the ones that we're covering in our next class or Web 2.0. You don't have to pay for them. Um, there's really no problem with firewall or anything like that to use them. All schools allow you to use them. That's not a deal. It's content they're always worried about. So those should all be fine as far as you use them in the classroom. Our final uh, area of content that we're going to cover this week is actually presenting. So again, some of these tools that we're looking at here, there are going to be some areas, for example, of PowerPoint that, you know, related to slideshow and review that we're not going to cover in here because they have more to do with you presenting the content as opposed to actually building it. Okay, that said, we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, PowerPoint and then we'll move into Google. And you can see that with we've been, this is our third um, section of the Office Suite software and you're starting to see a lot of familiar things in here by now, I hope. Uh, you're just going to see some of your higher function capabilities right up here in the upper left hand side. The file tab is always the same area that you go to to open various things, to save as, to you know print off, to give you options. All of these things are still available. They're the same matter where you go. All right. 
Some of these tabs are the same. You're still going to have a home tab and insert tab, uh, but some of them are very specific to presentation software. So if you look in your home area, same area, you've got clipboards, uh, slides as opposed to page uh, information, font areas, all the same choice. I wouldn't actually I shouldn't say all the same choices. You will notice uh, right here, for example, um, in the underline area, Word gave us an option to look at several different ways to underline text. This one only gives you one. So there are some differences as far as the font goes. If you want to use a specific line or something from Word into this, all you gotta do is copy and paste it and it should transfer over just fine gives you uh, some opportunities for coloring uh, your font, so that, that stuff is all pretty much the same. Uh, your paragraph information, it's got justification, bullets, it gives you, you know, again, you've got your bullet library options, uh, you've got your numbering, all the sorts of things are available. If they found functionality was more relevant to creating Word documents as opposed to using PowerPoint, then they just usually left it off. Okay, as far as your drawing capability, you have a lot of the same sort of what you're going to find in the um, in the insert tab. These are some of the more common lines and um, different drawing tools that you can use to emphasize points. Again, of course, you've got your text box, so that's not really all that different. And then you can see over here again, there's the editing options, and you've got find and replace, replace with, and all that stuff. Um, you've got you can select it all, just objects, you know, some some editing functions. Always don't forget this little question mark here in the corner. We always need the help tab. All right. So insert is where you're going to see some of the same functions and not always. So we're going to look at images because that's obviously where you know we tend to go most often. Now, the first thing I point out that's different is this photo album section. So if you have, and this is really more. Well, I, I can think of some educational uses for this. I think about, uh, for example, social studies teachers or elementary. You guys are almost all elementary teachers. Um, so if you have a uh, photo album that you used for a summer trip, summer class and you want to bring it in and show your students all of your pictures from your trip. If you are a subject area specific teacher in middle and secondary, I saw a lot of them take pictures to historic areas or um, important areas of science and they would bring that, there would be an album within their own personal collection. You can go into each slide and bring those photos in, but it's really an efficient way to do it. If you click on photo album, what you can do is actually start with the photo album and then make your edits all around that. So it's just a, a much simpler way to do it if you know that you have a collection of photos you should be using. All right, picture is exactly the same as it's always been. You know, if you click on that, it's going to take you to all of your different uh, options, which clearly my daughter's been playing around with this. So you can, it'll take you to, you know, for example, I've got a sample pictures here, so I don't look so I don't look like any other pictures on this computer. But you can, uh, if you've saved them, if you've got individual pictures of something that you know you want to include, then that's where you can pull them in. Again, just always watch out for uh, copyright. They're your pictures, and they're totally safe to use. Then that's fine. Uh, be very aware if you've got any kids in your class that are in the pictures, just make sure they know what your school's rules are about using that in the classroom setting as opposed to making this stuff available publicly. There are, everybody has a different policy, so just make sure that you know what your school says. All right, clip art, again, is always here. It's always going to pop into the right. And so, again, we're looking at precedents, and we keep kind of going with that. This does offer you, again, all different media file types. It does bring in pictures. All of these are fair use. You can use any of them and just not even worry about it. There are a couple different ways that you can bring the pictures over. If you click the drop down, you can have an insert. Um, you can copy it. If there are other ways that you want to manipulate it, all those sorts of things. But you can click insert and it'll put it at the exact same size in the exact center of the document. And again, if you click on any one of the corners, you drag it and drop it and you can make it there. And it should, it, if you do it from the corners, it's not going to mess with the focus. But if you go on the left or right side here, that is. So just you know, kind of be aware of that. Know where your undo buttons if you don't like it. All right, now in this first, you can see I went ahead and inserted this picture, but I should point out too that in this very first slide, you can see it automatically went to a title page. So if I wanted to start off with, okay, I wanted to go ahead and start off with the title, which I can't see because my image is covering it. Okay, it's automatically defaulted to a page like this. And if I want to go ahead and insert, I can put in, I'm sorry, I can go to my home page and click on new side. It will go ahead and pop in and it will treat it as a subtitle and then a whole bunch of content. And it will run that way because most presentations do run that format, but you don't have to choose that. You can decide to just have blank, uh, blank slide. So if anything, just like within just about any technology that we look at, if you want to find something about it or you want to do something to it, you can go ahead and right click on it. It'll give you a drop down menu of which choices are there. It doesn't mean those are your only choices. There are other things you can do up in the ribbon here that are not available here. These are just the most common functions. If I right click there, I can go ahead and just delete the slide, I can duplicate it, 
I can add a session, I can you know change the layout. So if I'm looking here, I created a new one. Let's say I don't want this you know subtitle and uh, and I text and buttons, which you know it's usually fall to do. So if I click on layout, then I can see I've got other options here. The first one gave me a title slide, then the title and content, there are section headers, comparisons, all these different options here. But there's always the blank option too. So I want to go ahead and change that then it automatically moves over to a blank slide. So that can be a little more helpful when we're talking about things like images. Okay, if I decide that this is the wrong image, I didn't want to do it, I can just go ahead and select it, hit delete, and it just goes away. So if I decided, say for example, I didn't want that one picture, I wanted to include this one. I did just show you how you can actually click on the arrow and select insert and things like that. But that's an extra click, I don't want to do that. If you just click on the title itself, it will automatically pop in same area, center, stage, you know, exactly where you want it to be. My other option is to take it, click it, and drag it. So let's say I actually want it up here in the corner. That may be a more beneficial way for you to do it. And again, I can go ahead and adjust the size of my picture I want. And then I can put it right there. Okay. Now, some of your other options. Uh, title, I'm sorry, tables. Tables are also available here. Work exactly the same way that they did uh, in the other versions. You can just go ahead and do it. And you can see as I'm just sort of previewing what size I want here, it will show you what it looks like in the PowerPoint. It's defaulted to the blue design, but again, as soon as we click OK, it will pop in. You're going to see that design tab and it'll give you some other options as well. So if I go and click that, then you can see that it has put it here, which I don't want there. So let's say I want to go ahead and if I go over into the corner of any one object, I'm going to find just the right spot here. But if you want to move it to another page, see, see it's kind of tricky with tables because the fish are trying to select the cell as opposed to the table. So once you get these four arrows, then you know you're in the right spot. Okay. So let's move the table down, and it again defaults to blue. But you can see that right up here, it's got this new temporary section called Table Tools. And that gives me all the same options that we saw before. So let's say I want to go ahead and change it just to black and white. That makes it a little, little bit easier to read. All right, so your other options, um, we'll do screenshot in just a little bit. Go ahead and show you the same options you had before uh, with your smart art, shapes, your charts, those are all options that you still have. If I want to go ahead and put my lines in here, I can actually do that within the picture. So if you're presenting on something and you're showing a picture and you want to demonstrate the difference between two things. So for example, I'm looking at a picture of the overall office here. And I go ahead and draw my line with the two arrows between the two flags that are here. So if I can see that here, what you're probably noticing right about now is that this line is really, really hard to see. The reason for that is that the last um, font, or less our last color that I used when I was using any program, not even just this one, but words, you can see that carries over. The, if I was using this light blue color the last time, it automatically assumes that I'm going to want to use that again. So that's you know something important to know is about a lot of these technologies is it learns your behavior, and if it's across one suite, it can actually carry that behavior over to another product you're using. So if you click on that, now you can see that I've selected it because it's got those two sort of little bubble arrows. And for some of you who are messing with pictograms the other day, you probably realize that, that means select. So if you right click, again, that's usually the quickest way to find it. If you right click on that, then I can see that I've got my options here. And I can have my connect types if I want to go ahead and change something about that. If I want to go ahead and scroll down toward the bottom here, this is where it's a little bit confusing. It says format shape. And I think a lot of people assume that format shape means that you want to change the shape of the object. Remember, this is a line, but it's considered something in shapes. Remember, we look up here, this is where we found it. So it doesn't actually want you to format the shape of the item. It wants you to shape the item itself. And I know that that's part of the problem with some of these technologies is that garbage is just a little bit confusing um, from one to the next. But usually, just click around and kind of figure it out. You'll find it. So if you click on format shape, and then it's going to give you all these different options here, different things that you can do with it. It's got line style, line color is really what I'm looking at. You're going to have some time in class to mess around with all this stuff and figure out what works for you. So I've got a solid line listed here. I can't do a gradient line. I can get really fancy if I want to, but you can see I've got this blue color, and that's just not going to work at all because most of that picture is blue. So if I decide to go and click something really stark, like this dark red color, go ahead and click that, hit close, and now you can see that it's red in between here as well. Okay, so that does give me some options. It's a little bit more obvious, but you know, again, some of the other things that I might do to enhance that is make the picture bigger and make the line a little longer and more stark so that we can point out. So there are all kinds of different things you can do to manipulate that. Okay, and there's also options for art, smart art, and I can get into that. You guys can play with that during class. Uh, text options, you've got date and time, um, you've got slide numbers, you've got word art. These are all different things that you can use. Equations are all the same as they were before. You can insert video and audio. So if you have a video or an audio file saved onto your computer, and that really depends 
on what exactly you want done with it. So if you're using a YouTube video, you're going to have to go through a slightly different process, but if you just want to embed a video that you've created on your own computer with your own file, then you can go ahead and use that here. If you have an audio clip as well. So what I can think about that would be handy is if you had interviews from somebody about a particular subject that you were working on or you had somebody else's commentary, you can save it in an Audacity file, which we'll talk a little bit about, and uh, then you can go ahead and embed it within your PowerPoint so you have somebody actually speaking about a photo or another image that you have in your PowerPoint presentation. So lots of different options for you there. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to design and you've got page set up here. I don't, I can't think of too many instances where you'd want to change the orientation. If you have a lot of information that was originally on a Word document and you don't want to break it up because the orientation is different here than it is defaulted to be in Word documents, then I could see that as a big possibility. I just don't know how that would alter your presentation style. So you want to always think about those things too. So if you look on themes, uh, these are all talked about themes as, as available on all the other props as well. These are all the ones that are defaulted in the program. So if I go ahead and click on any one of them here. So let's say I like this one for one reason or another. Now you can see that this was, this looks very different now. So when I look back in the uh, title page, it was originally centered with the subtitle and, and that was it. But if I use this, it changes it quite a bit. Okay. And these are all sort of false adoptions. They get some really nice, really impressive ones. Um, these are only the first set. You can always go down a little bit further. I guess they give you all kinds of very fancy options here. And what you notice is over here on the right, if you click on colors, you don't even have to stick with the color option that you have. If you decide, well, this is too dark, I don't really want to use that. If you click on a different color scheme, then you can end up with something, you know, quite different from what you had originally. So that can be pretty helpful too. All right, and sometimes it takes a minute to move over. Let's see if I can find something lighter to demonstrate it a little bit better. So this is part one, and this is just another demo, so we just kind of run through how you can see how some of these look different. Some of them only look slightly different, some of them look very different. So I would say mess around with them a little bit and see what works for you. Just know that these are defaults. They're not assumed to be um, uh, the way that, that you necessarily want to do this. You can customize this thing really, really well. So if I look at an example here, if you do a quick Google search for um, uh, PowerPoint templates. Uh, you're going to see lots, and we'll talk about templates in Google too, lots and lots of templates available in Google since it's more of an open source concept. So, But when you uh, do a search for this, I'll show you in class where some of these are. But this one, for example, is one that I found online that I used just for my um, dissertation defense. And this has a really cool picture of people hiding up a mountain. And then you can see with each page, it gives you sort of just a, a snippet at picture on the side. And that can be something a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. It's not something that everybody has seen a million times over. So uh, just kind of be aware that there are lots of options for you. Just because they're not offered in PowerPoint doesn't mean you can't use them. So we're going to spend some time checking around that and see what our options are. They give you some fantastic options here, though. Lots and lots of opportunities to uh, customize it and build it into something that's you know really more you think representative of what you're trying to get across in class. All right. The other option that you have besides going to a design template is I wanted to go with my background styles over here. I can actually change the focus and the highlight of the center part of the picture. I can make it a lot darker. I can format the background specifically to something. Um, we, we used this particular feature using a picture or texture fill when we were doing uh, pictograms. So we had our own picture saved, but you can, if you have a one picture of something that you personally want to use in the background, you can always do that. Uh, gradient fill options are going to give you, there's preset colors, and then you can use, uh, let's see, you can change the rectangular, you can use something more along these lines, so you can come mess around with it a little bit, see what works for you, and then again down here, it'll let you get so customized, you can really change it down to just a few degrees difference that you, you, you notice. So anyway, when you mess around with it a little bit, you can apply it to just one slide, you can apply it to all, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then you can see how it does change the background of all of your slides. So this is going to be something you could spend a lot of time on messing around with your design in. So uh, just be aware of all your choices there. All right. As far as your transitions, last thing we'll cover for this one today is uh, transitions, but the rest of it really has more to do with you presenting your actual work. So right now there are no transitions between slides, and that's what they mean. You can see right here, and a lot of people forget about these subheadings here, but that's what they're indicating here is transition to this slide, not the really special effects of each individual thing. That's what we'll talk about next. 
right now there's no transition from one slide to the next. So you can see here if I'm going to slideshow, I go from the beginning, move to the next one, and it just moves to the next slide, and that's it. If I decide that's boring, then I want to do something different. I can click on each one of these, and I can see what it actually looks like. So it's cut in. This one is fitting in. This one pushes it up wipes out. So you can see we could spend all day playing around with these things. Some of them are, are very nice and clean and professional. Some of them are, we've got honeycomb here, some of them are a little bit over the top and those can be good uh, when you're talking, if there's certain concepts that you're looking at. If this whole honeycomb effect ties into what you're trying to say, then that can be really, really powerful. Otherwise, it can be a distraction. So just think about those things, play around with them. The really nice thing about the modern versions uh, of Microsoft is that you can try these out with your actual content to see what it looks like and see if it's just a little too much or if it's or if it's a good transition. Okay. So when I leave it on, let's say this is glitter, go to Sideshow in the beginning, and I can see that this is what it will look like when the first one comes on. Oh, and you know what? That was moving in just to that slide. So in order to apply that to the same one, I would also need to be clicking on that slide. Okay, and now you can see from the indicator here, you can see this little star that appears to be moving. That indicates that there is a transition for this particular slide. Now, you can include a sound of some kind if you really want to get noxious. You can include a lot of different things. There's a camera, there's a breeze option here, there's a pause. Lots of different things you can look at. And that can, and like I said, we'll, we'll talk as we get to presentation what works and, and what doesn't. We'll talk about general guidelines. This one also gives you duration. How long do you want the transition to be? If you want it to be relatively quick, if you want it to drag out a bit more, if you want this set to apply to all of them or just one, those are all things you want to think about. It's defaulted to advance the slide after on mouse click, but if you want it to automatically go out a certain amount of time, you can select that here. All right. Now, for animations, my stereo. When we look at animations for the individual items within a slide, so if you have a lot of things that are being bolted and you only want to cover it, we talked about uh, how a lot of teachers will take a uh, something on, a, um, on an overhead, cover up certain aspects with a piece of paper and just gradually move them down. It's, it's a very, very common uh, technique, but you can't really do it <laughs> with this technology. Fortunately, the technology builds ways into itself to, to actually do that. So in order to get these individual components to show up at different times. So let me go ahead and add a, let's add a text box here real quick, just so that I can, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have a section here called the Oval Office, and let's say I have a picture here, and then my table compares the Oval Office to other executive offices around the world, or if something, we'll just throw in an example here. All right, so I've got three different areas, and I don't want them all to pop up because right now, when I'm moving from one slide to the next, I've got the title slide here. I move into, oh, I've got sound on it still. I move into the next one, and you can see all three components actually pop up, and that's not what I want. You might also be worth noting here that I don't know if you can see this. I, I don't really have too many vision problems, but you can see the rows on the table. Two, these two rows are actually supposed to be gray, and this one's supposed to be white, and it just looks like one giant white blob. So it's very important to note, especially if you have visually impaired students, that that can be a problem if you're trying to present certain content. So mess around a little bit with your design to figure out what's going to work for you. All right. So, but I don't want, regardless, I don't want it all to show up at the same time. I want them to show up differently. So let's say I want my text to show up first. I'm going to go to animations, and you notice that when I don't have anything clicked, I can't do anything with it. I have to have a slide component actually selected in order for this menu to even show up. So if you notice that they're all grayed out, it just means that it's, it's not available until you actually select it. So if I roll over, and this is nice because I don't even have to click on it, if I just roll over these things, I can see how it comes in. Now the first one is always just appear, so it just, you can see, it just kind of shows up. But then there's fade, so it gradually comes in, it can fly in, it can float in. You know, there are lots and lots of different, and again, just so many options here, you could really go berserk. Uh, swivel. <laughs> so again, just because it's available doesn't mean it necessarily should be, but we'll go ahead and select swivel, swivel anyway. All right. So I know I've got that, and you can see that after I've actually selected something, I didn't just roll over it to demo it, I actually selected it. Once I did that, you can see that there's a number one right here. That's how you can tell what order it's in, and that's a real improvement over the last one. Before, it was a little bit harder to figure out how your order was going to go. 
So if I know that I want that one to be one, I know I want my picture to be number two, and I want, oops, and I want that to fade in. I know I've selected that, so then you can see number two pops up. It won't do that if I'm just rolling over it to see what it does, okay? It will only do that after I've selected it. And then let's say I've got my table here, and I'm looking at it, and yeah, white seems to work, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now let's see, I realized I made a huge mistake. I didn't actually want this to go there first. I wanted uh, the table to go before the picture, whatever. I've got, what I have to do is select something. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my picture, and then I go over here to the right and it says reorder animation. All I have to do is go to move later, and it knocks it down to the next level. So that's a very, very nice, easy way to move things around a little bit. All right, the other thing, depending on how much information I've got in there, is I can see my animation pane here. And I can go ahead and play it as it is so I can see what it looks like. Now, did you notice what just happened here? We'll go ahead and play this again. So the text came in, the picture came in, or the table came in and the picture came in. And I'm noticing that this was not part of my picture. <laughs> So that is really very important to know, that when you draw things in it, that it's not necessarily a part of your picture. You may want it to, um, to move along with your text. So it's all, that's why it's always important to preview these things, try them out, see how it looks, make your adjustments you know, wherever you need to, but just know that that can easily happen. Once you have your animation pane up here, then it's very easy to sort of manipulate things and move them around. I can just sort of drag them and drop them. And then I can always play it to see how it actually looks before you know, it moves on. You can even see how it gradually moves across the timeline. So it gets pretty sophisticated. All right, we'll go ahead and get rid of these sidebars since we don't really need them, they're taking up space. And uh, let's see, if you want to add another animation, there are other, it's got entrance effects, emphasis, again, you can really go, go crazy with this. And then it's uh, designed to go to start on click, but then you can set the timing also as well. We will talk a little bit when we get to presenting about how to rehearse your timings and how to record your animation. There are lots of different ways that you can practice your presentation before you actually do it. And, but that's for now, anyway, that's, uh, that's all we're really going to cover. Those areas are going to be slideshow and review. And this is worth noting that if there's anything that you, further that you need to research, it's available just like it was in Word and Excel. You can go ahead and search all the various sites that they hook you up with and, uh, and do that. You can check your spelling, all that sort of thing. Um, and we'll talk about this when we get to presentation as well. The only other thing that you want to think about as you're creating is this slideshow area. And I was doing it throughout, but if you click on from the beginning, that's when you're going to be able to see how it actually looks. So when you're checking through some of these different components, it'll give you some preview opportunities early on, and some of them won't. You really won't get a really good idea of how the whole thing looks until you actually do that. So that's going to be worth noting too. And that's it for now, so we'll go ahead and move on to uh, Google Presenter.